All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be the first part in our bolt gun series. We're just going to go over the components and parts that I selected to build my bolt gun with and kind of why I chose them and whatnot. So let's get started. Bolt guns are popular again. Precision shooting has become popular again, the PRS circuit and whatnot. And long range shooting is just, it's just fun. Dude. You're just having fun with the boys, sending a little piece of metal a very long way and being very accurate with that. It's pretty damn cool. And shooting is obviously America's national sport still, no matter what anyone says. Ended up choosing 6.5 Creedmoor uh, just for the really the availability of ammo and good ballistics, you know, versus something like 308. 308's a chunky round, um, you know, obviously 6.5 Creed was developed and has a better BC than, you know, 308. And by BC, I mean ballistic coefficient. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, it's basically how well a bullet's shape moves through the air and defeats drag and retains its energy downrange. Now, if you don't know what any of that means, don't worry, we'll talk about it in later videos. You know, with Arrow coming on to the scene with their Solus line, kind of a middle of the road, moderately priced option that a lot of people can get into. Uh, that's what I chose to go with primarily, just because I didn't want to spend too much money on my first gun, kind of just want this to be a learning experience really, figure out um, my strengths and weaknesses, the, the guns, strengths and weaknesses, and probably build another rifle, maybe in one of the boutique. I'm gonna say boutique calibers like 6GT. Uh, I went to a PRS match recently, everybody's using 6 Creed more. Just those kind of niche calibers that are really, really designed for you know, velocity, ballistic coefficient, and whatnot. So, so there's really only four basic components in building a bolt gun. You have your action, your barrel, your chassis, and the trigger and you know whatever optic or bipod or accessories you want to put on we'll, we'll talk about that later but um, really that's all there is to it if you're looking to build your own is find out what action you know decide what caliber you want that dictates your action whether it's going to be a short action or a long action for you know a long action for magnum calibers um, if you want to go that route and then pick a barrel barrel length barrel profile, barrel material, and then pick a chassis that has the features that you like and put it all together. So with that said, let's get started. For my action, I chose to go with the Solus action. Um, just because I wanted a pre-fit system, this action accepts pre-fit um, shoulder barrels, which means you can basically just thread it on. Some require a barrel nut, some don't. You know, versus going to a machine shop and having that barrel specifically lathe for that action and mating those two together. You know, there's added costs in doing that. But um, yeah, Arrow came on the market in the past year, year and a half with the Solus line. A really cool action. It's one piece. It's got a integrated 20 MOA rail up here, so you don't have to buy extra scope bases or scope mounting platforms and then bolt those to the action. They're already there, so you just buy whatever optic mount or rings that you like and throw your optic on, it's pretty easy. Integral recoil lug that interfaces with the chassis and uh, for the bolt, pretty sweet. That's a 60 degree throw, you know, so you don't have to travel as much compared to the 90 degree bolts. It's got uh, dual ejectors, uh, which obviously aids in ejection and I've never really felt any high high end bolt guns but the action's pretty smooth uh, right out the box and everything I've seen on on the internet because it's always it's always real right is that the action only gets smoother as time goes on so uh, we'll report back once we have you know a few hundred rounds through the gun um, another cool thing is that the bolt cocks once it's lifted so you don't necessarily have to pull the bolt all the way back for it to reset it's cocked right when you lift up the bolt 
And while we're here uh, for the barrel, I ended up choosing the Proof Carbon Fiber Barrels. They have their own line of prefits for the Solish chassis. Um, they also have prefits for other different manufacturers, but um, the biggest thing with the carbon fiber is weight savings. Um, you're saving about a half pound over the standard metal barrel that's comes that's they're made by ballistic advantage for aero uh, but you're saving about a half a pound with the carbon fiber and plus it just looks pretty badass in my opinion with the contrast of the chassis and the scope and the action all together uh, for now i just have um, just a thread protector on there i do have a diligent defense enticer ti that i'm going to just direct thread on here once the atf grants me um, their almighty permission. Some bullshit. But yeah, moving on for the chassis. Again, trying to keep this gun as moderately priced as I can with also, you know, not really going cheap is I went with the Solus chassis. And lucky me, I'm a big fan of Clear Anno. And they ended up doing a Clear Anno run for Black Friday last year. And it was on sale too because it's a blem. Uh, I think it's like 520 bucks, which is pretty pretty solid price considering the normal chassis. I think are almost 900 bucks. And then I was also looking at the MDT ACC. Uh, I think that's what it's called ACC series, and those are 1300 plus. So uh, being able to get a chassis for a little over 500 bucks was pretty sweet. Um, and it's got a pretty good feature set. For what it is, uh, we'll start in the back here. So you have a adjustable shoulder pad and adjustable cheek riser here. So both of these have threaded push knobs. So you just unthread that or unscrew it. You can push in this, and you're able to adjust the length of pull on that. And likewise, the cheek riser adjusts the same as well. Um, you got some QD points back here and you know bag point if you're using a rear bag um, my only want out of this is for it to have a folding stock option it does not currently have a folding stock option arrow says it is in works and on the way but from what i've heard it's it's going to be towards the end of 2024 when it's coming but uh, you can see the center piece here they said you're just going to have to replace this and it'll have the folding stock adapter. Uh, really looking forward to that. Not really a big deal, um, just general use. It's more for packing it, you know, putting it in a case or lugging it around. It just makes it a lot more convenient to reduce the overall length of it. Uh, here you have a thumb rest right here. You know, in precision shooting, you're not really wrapping your thumb around on your that side. You're kind of keeping it on the same side that you shoot on, and that is adjustable as well. It can take any tangless AR-15 grip. Um, this is the one that it comes with. I'll probably stick with this for now until I actually use it and see what I like. Uh, Magazine-wise, it is an Ambi mag release, and it does take AI mags. Right now, I just have some of the Magpul ones. Eventually, I will try out the MDT ones. Um, the mag release is adjustable, so if you're having a mag that's not working too well, you can adjust that, but out the box, it's working just fine for the mag pull ones. Um, you can see on the forehand here, you have more QD points. You have M-lock all the way down on the uh, 3 and 9 and 6 o'clock on the bottom there. And on the bottom, it does have integrated arca rail um, if you want to do that for bipods and stuff like that. And then it is compatible with their night vision mount. Now, I don't have a night vision scope for this, but with the four end, this is a 17 inch model, with it being so long, there is some play in there torsion wise. So just got the night vision mount to add a little bit of rigidity to it and it looks cool, so. And I think it can take up to one and a quarter inch barrel diameters. The Solus Prefit is 1.2, I believe. So, um, But yeah, Clear Anno, pretty sweet. I'm, I'm a whore for Clear Anno. And it is a blem. You can definitely 
see some things when you look at it up close, just like looks dirty, just a uh, you know, defect in the anodized bath, I'm sure, but I don't care. You know, it was almost half off compared to the normal one. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, for the optic, I did choose the Leupold Mark IV. It's their new line, or basically the revamp of the Mark IV line. This is a 6 to 24. Uh, I was originally planning on getting the Mark V and the 5 to 25, so this has a pretty similar magnification range. It's just a lot cheaper than the Mark V. I think this retails for 1,500 bucks, I want to say, and the Mark V, 5 to 25, I want to say is 2,200 bucks, so 700 bucks less for a pretty similar scope. What I was told from the guys at Loophole is they have some parts commonality with the eyepiece and some other things in the Mark IV, and with that they were able to keep the price down compared to the Mark V. Now, um, it does have the PR3 reticle. I was really wanting the PR2 because I'm a big fan of that, but um, the shop, you know, these, these new Mark IVs are really hard to find, and the local gun store only had the PR3, so I was like, whatever, I'll just, I'll just buy it and we'll test it out. And if I don't like it, you know, I can always sell it and get the PR2. So they had some Badger rings, Badger ordnance. So I just got those. You know, nothing really too crazy about that. So that's the optic setup there. Uh, for the trigger, I did just pick up a Timney Remington 700 hit. Uh, again, I kind of went that way for price. I know a lot of people were recommending the Trigger Tech Diamond, which is about a hundred bucks more than the the Timney hit. But you know, I'll shoot the Timney, and if if I don't like it, you know, I can always sell it and upgrade to the Trigger Tech, or or just upgrade to the Trigger Tech anyway. So but yeah, so that's all the parts I choose. We have the Solus Action from Air Precision, the Solus Chassis from Air Precision. We have a Proof Research Carbon Fiber Prefit Barrel for the Solus Action. We have the Timney Remington 700 hit for the trigger, and we have a Leupold Mark IV HD and 6024 magnification with the PR3 reticle for our optic. If you have any further questions on why I chose these, or if you're using them and have any anecdotes, stories to add, please add those in the comments below. On the next video, we'll show you how to assemble this stuff and put it all together. So stay tuned for that. Appreciate you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.